this InspiredInsider.com interview, we talk with Gavin Zuklinski. He's founder of Acuity Scheduling. Have you ever been conflicted on what path to take, whether you take the safer route with the career, the job, or pursue your passion and go for it with your entrepreneurial venture? Listen to what he says about that. He talks about also mistakes he made in marketing, in sales, and much more, and how he wasn't tracking, but what he does now. Listen up. Coming up next. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcame big challenges in life and in business. And I like to have inspirational people and businesses I use. Today, we have Gavin Zuklinski. He's the founder of Acuity Scheduling. We use it. I don't get any uh, commissions or anything for, for talking about it, but I love it. And we're gonna talk about some of the roadblocks he hit and mistakes he made along the way. Currently, Acuity Scheduling has 4,500 business accounts. They have 100,000 appointments scheduled each month with a team of three, and they grow 15 to 20% per month. Gavin, thanks for being with us. Oh, thank you, Jeremy. Now, Jeremy, so. I'm gonna get into asking some questions, but I always like to include a fun fact, and we were talking before, I was saying how one fun fact is you can't find Gavin anywhere on the internet. I was doing research, I like to do a lot of research, and I found out he does, he did computer security with intelligent, intelligence communities, which I can't mention. Um, and another fun fact is he drinks eight espressos a day and is addicted. And when we first started talking, it's his little mug. Can you hold that up for a second? I thought he was an actual giant. Like if you're watching the video, not just, not just the audio, you'll see what I mean. Um, but Gavin, we often learn our most valuable lessons with mistakes that we made. So I'm excited to hear some of the things you got through with your company. Um, just to start, what's been the most painful moment in business for you? What was one of those low points that you remember? Oh man. Um, so, uh, a little bit about how Acuity got started, if you don't mind. Go first. ahead. Um, so Acuity Scheduling is online appointment scheduling software for small businesses. Uh, and I ended up starting this in college just on my own, bootstrapped, uh, actually for my mom who's a massage therapist and there was nothing out on the internet for it. Um, so it was just an easy way for her to manage her schedule online uh, and have clients book online too. And it's always been kind of a, a part-time thing that I've worked on. Um, since college, uh, and even when I've had other jobs uh, uh, doing a lot of computer security work and with other companies in the intelligence community, it's been incredible fun. Uh, and it's always been a real challenge, actually, like trying to straddle those those two types of different careers. Uh, one in government and one trying to do something entrepreneurial. Yeah. yeah. So what was one of those times you remember where it was painful when you were doing both? <laughs> so working with computer security, especially in the government, it's it's not a government job where you have short hours or anything. It is the worst possible hours you could you could have. Uh, uh, it was uh, back in July. I was uh, I worked like insane amounts of hours, and back in July, I literally did a twenty four hour shift. I was completely exhausted. Um, I was trying to sell a town home. Uh, at the time, close to to where I worked, uh, so I, I crashed there. It was five minutes away from work. There's nothing in the place except for uh, a carpet, thankfully, and not hardwood floors. Uh, so I just slept on the carpet for four hours. I had my laptop. I answered answered a a quick couple of support emails that I could, and then immediately went back to work to try to 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 try to finish the the project that I was working on and. I think after that, I realized, oh my God, I, I really can't do both of these things at once with acuity growing at the rate that it is, and and my job, as much fun as it was, was sucking up so much of my time. Uh, and it's after that that I decided to to kind of stop working for the government and uh, and go off and take on acuity full time. Yeah, it's a hard decision, and but I always like to know what inspires you to strive 
in business and life. What do you think of when times are low like that and you're sleeping on the carpet in your town home? Yeah, I've, it was kind of funny that I was sleeping on the carpet of my town home because I remember my dad when I was a kid, we had a, a family restaurant. It was a British cafe in like kind of rural Pennsylvania. Uh, and it was my dad's passion after he worked in, uh, worked in hospitals for somebody else. He, he went off and started his own restaurant. And the hours for restaurants are pretty awful too. No awful. night shifts, no 24 hour shifts, but he was, he would sleep on like the hard concrete floor in the back. Wow. Uh, and I remember him just working incredible hours, but he loved it. Um, uh, he was, he was, he was proud of everything that he made and what he turned the business into. So I always kind of think back on that. Um, uh, as I'm doing it and realize like, um, it, it could be worse. It, it could be worse. I, I might not have carpeting. I might have concrete. So what made you get into computers? Your family's in the restaurant business. How'd you get into, to that? I honestly, I'm not sure. Like I've, I've always loved, I've always been like the techie person, the nerd in my family and all of that. Um, uh, the, the usual thing with most techie people, self-taught, worked on it at home. Um, uh, I was I was really thankful. Um, in Pennsylvania, they had a program called the Governor's School for Information Technology, uh, which they I think that they dropped because of tax funding reasons. Um, but even though I was kind of from rural Pennsylvania and worked on this on my own, when I went there, I realized, oh man, there's a ton of other nerdy people like me in the world too. So it helped me connect. Um, and kind of it, it made me go on and try to try to develop things on my own too. Yeah. Early on when you're obviously your dad had a lot of pride in his business and was hardworking, what advice do you remember from back then or lessons that he was talking about when he was talking about his business? Do you remember from, from those days? Um, I don't remember him giving me any particular advice, but I do remember kind of always going into the restaurant and working with him and, and not really what he said, but, but what he did. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I remember a lot of, uh, uh, like how, how dedicated he was to, to what he did, making sure everything was clean, uh, inside of the refrigerators in the back where nobody else would go. Uh, I remember him coming up with the menus and uh, trying to, the one interesting thing that I think I learned from his restaurant too was um, uh, the, the menu itself wasn't just what dishes he wanted or, or what he really wanted to make. It was a lot about how do you find the overlap to make sure that there is zero waste in everything that you do. Uh, when he would create a menu, he'd make sure that the the ingredients overlapped. If there was a special, the specials each day of the week would kind of overlap. So each one was reused and, and it always keeps the ingredients fresh and everything else fresh. And, mm -hmm. and strangely enough, I think that kind of applies to technology too, where um, trying to make sure that everything, even with the code in your back end, uh, is, is simple, it's clean, uh, and you don't have a whole lot of bloat. You don't have a, a million different JavaScript libraries just to do one distinct task. They, they work together nicely. I like that analogy. Um, so it's like the refrigerator in the back you keep clean. You have to keep your, your uh, back end clean <laughs> too. <laughs> um, I, I, do, I do. I haven't always done a good job and there's no smell. You have to go looking for it, but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> What's one of the, after working hard, and we'll get through talking this, about some of the challenges and roadblocks, what's one of the proudest accompl accomplishments you've had? One of those times you're just amazed at what you've done with the business? Oh, so there's been a, a lot of amazement as I was going on. Uh, like, like I said, my, I, I really, I literally just did it for my mom. Uh, and I realized that there was a larger market out there because I tried to find existing solutions first. Um, but it's always been a part-time thing. Um, so when I was in college, uh, uh, I think we had like three customers and that was like 60 bucks a month. Um, so I was like, oh man, I can go out for a dinner every night. Like this is fantastic. I worked on something for a while and it is making me passive income. So there was a dinner every month. Uh, and then it went on for a little while, like a, a couple dinners a month. Um, and then after I had graduated and was working my full time job, I, I realized it was making I know, something low by today's like 1500 a month 
uh, and I started looking at Porsches online and, and realized that I could get a used Porsche for about a thousand a month. So I was like, oh, this is fantastic. I already have a full-time job. Let me just use it for fun. If I'm going to do something on the side, I might as well enjoy it. So I went out and I bought a used Porsche. It was it was a blast for the year that I had it. <laughs> ended up selling it, though. It's uh, not the most practical car for city driving, but it's awesome. We'll talk about some of that, that point also when you decide to go full-time, too. Um, but first, what is one of the roadblocks that you run up against in the business so we can, you know, maybe avoid it and what you learned from back then? Yeah, so it's always been the two things of, of straddling wildly different careers. One with government, computer security, one entrepreneurial. Um, and I, I've uh, seesawed back and forth between the two a couple of times. <clears throat> and there was a, a point where uh, I had taken down uh, signups and stopped accepting new users to Acuity mm. just because I felt like the the whatever an hour a day it was was taking up too much. I was um, uh, I was trying to answer support emails, uh, look back and realize that support emails were the biggest thing that was taking up the time. It wasn't server maintenance or anything else. I, I wasn't doing too much development except when I enjoyed it. Um, so uh, for every day I had uh, an hour commute each way, I would try to respond to, to emails. <coughs> Sorry. It's all right. It's all that espresso you drink. No. <laughs> it is. It is. It's, 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 it's like your throat a little bit too. Uh, yeah, as I was driving, I was on my iPhone like reading emails and responding to emails. Uh, 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 Driving like back and forth around around Dulles, that I almost got into so many accidents and like uh, I was always like looking out for cops on my phone, trying trying to trying to drop it whenever a cop would go past me. So, oh, uh, after that, I I ended up um, stopped taking up new signups. People kind of thought that the service was dying. It definitely wasn't. It was just that I wanted to provide good support for the few people that I had instead of instead of growing an incredible amount. Yeah, uh, and that that was that was that was kind of a tough point. <laughs> point trying to figure out how do I balance these couple of things, uh, and after a little while, um, uh, ended up renewing signups and and trying to, trying to grow the business a little bit again, and, and just trying to trying to figure out a balance between my time doing something fun and and creating something. I mean, that's a good problem to have, and I do notice with the service too that. I get quick response emails. I mean, they're very quick. Oh, they're even faster now. Yeah. So, uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I I've always tried to to focus on support. Actually, providing really good support. Uh, I just hired somebody to to take on a lot more support. But I read everything that they do too, and I try to make sure that anything technical goes goes directly to me or forwarded on to another developer. Um, yeah, and, and especially providing fast responses. There's a big difference between responding in uh, two to three business days and getting a response in an hour. So you can actually just keep doing what you're doing it right. with your business right. instead of waiting for me. What should some of the people be using or things that you do that work to speed up the customer support or help with customer support <laughs> that may, they may not be doing? Uh, Oh, I, I, so I'm actually kind of obsessive about it. Like on my phone, um, I have it whenever something comes through me. Of, of course, my, my phone lights up so I can see that there's an email. So I'll be out at a bar or something and actually <laughs> respond to support emails. So it only takes me like a minute or two to give somebody a response that they might search for an hour to try to figure out. So. I figure no matter where I am, I should do that. <laughs> and now that I've hired on um, uh, somebody else to help me out with that, it's been trying to balance out what what I'm good at, what she's good at, uh, and making sure that what she responds to, she also provides really personable help back, and it's not just a machine. I, I spent a really long time trying to find a good help desk too. It's funny, like Zendesk and those other ones are terrible. I hate responding to an email and getting an auto reply and then after I get the reply, getting like a, a banner of dashes and things and ticket numbers and all this and then jammed in there somewhere is a one-line reply of like, hey, can you please tell us your username or something? So 
Um, I, I love it now. I actually use Help Scout. It lets us manage our workflow, tie into there a lot. So whenever somebody sends an email, it automatically pulls up their customer information, uh, uh, lets us see what they've searched for in the help, um, uh, lets us see like some other common problems they might be having. So it's been that that has been fantastic. Help Scout, yeah. To get more yeah. I guess that's a good test, right? You send in a, an email, and if you let you better like their customer support, if you're going to be using their software as a customer support, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's been, um, you know, also talking about that? What's one of the big mistakes that you found that you've made that you've learned from in the business? Um, yeah. So I, I definitely did not focus on marketing enough. Um, I was kind of, you know, uh, mid 2000s. Everybody was a child of 37 Signals, reading their blog about about creating the best product you can and making it super simple and and all those types of things. Uh, and I tried to do that. I'm, I'm a developer, so I didn't always succeed. But the one thing that they made it sound like is 99% of what you do is your product. And I think what I found too is that it's not so much the product; it's uh, it's probably 50/50 marketing. And I just wasn't doing enough with that. And I also didn't measure enough to figure out that I was failing at marketing when I was trying to focus on the product too much. Um, and I realized, I think around January, I, I was trying to sink more money into into my AdWords campaign. I realized I spent like three thousand dollars a month on AdWords and ended up getting two conversions when I looked back in the month. I was like, oh, this is yeah, this is terrible. Um, so actually, properly doing marketing instead of just blindly throwing money at it uh, was one thing, and then completely different too was actually succeeding in the execution of communicating what your product is, how it's valuable, and on top of all of that, directing people who have a one second attention span to the right place. I failed at that in the beginning. I think we've gotten a lot better though. Um, it's also been a, a, a kind of part-time effort for me, like I mentioned. So uh, I was always trying to think about what it costs me. Um, so if you look at the pricing, a lot of it is, um, <laughs> if you're a business, I wanna make money off of you. If you're a uh, a, a free type of person, you you do uh, whatever. Uh, I don't care about making money off of you. So if you're looking for things like branding to accept payments, um, to embed into your website to hide the fact that you're using Acuity, that's totally fine. Just give me a little bit of money. Um, but I've always made that uh, as low as I thought reasonable. Um, and I think my prices are too low. <laughs> low, actually. I want to ask you I, about that actually in a second. But I want to go back to the marketing part. For a second, yeah. Give me a tell me what was it before? What did the site look like before when you realized the conversions were really poor? And what's it like now? Just so people hear what was on there in the beginning and what you changed to increase the conversions. Oh my gosh. It was back then. It was it was ugly. It was a monochromatic website of grays with uh, a single screenshot and a tagline of easy online appointment scheduling software. Mm -hmm. um, the 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 tagline still sticks with us uh, but how it was presented on the page and the fact that there was nothing that that described how uh, it directed you at sign up and demo and things like that uh, it was muddled with a couple of buttons and uh, it gave the the customers a lot of choice about what they could do uh, and their first interaction with the like the demo account um, was a uh, an account that would just get reset every day, but it was shared between everybody. So <clears throat> as you get a few thousand people using it, there would be misconfigurations. It was, it was horribly ugly. Um, since then, um, I've tried to try to focus on optimizing that and um, completely got rid of demos, uh, getting people to just focus on, if you're a business, focus on this is what you have to do to sign up. And then once you sign up, sort of guiding them through these are the first couple of steps instead of going from uh, the the kiddie pool of this is online appointment scheduling software to the deep end of here's an account with no information about how to configure it oh and it might be screwed up already good luck so uh, so you kind of zero uh, them in on one focused thing that they should do when they go to your page yeah so it, it used to be a couple of things now it is sign up for a free account after you sign up, it gradually takes you through, gives you a couple of steps to do to, to configure. Um, 
and then takes you for I, I don't even give them I, I try to focus on people signing up for a free account instead of instead of one that they have to pay for just to to get the experience and if they need features to pay they'll see that in the app yeah so why, how do you decide on that start now for free instead of I mean you could go on with anything like see how it works or sign <laughs> up you know to get your three tips on how to increase your productivity with online scheduling what, what made you decide yeah. to go with that hey that last one's a good one I might have to try that <laughs> um, yeah it so the the tagline I've, I've changed around with too and that button though has changed a lot um, uh, a while back, I I didn't have the metrics to know that I was failing, and now I have the metrics, and now I, I measure everything. And and one of the things that I do obsessively now too is that every change to the marketing site, especially, is A/B tested, so you can mm -hmm. get an actual statistical significance about about what that change is. So uh, the button actually was a it was a recent change, and, and found it got five percent more conversions than free sign up. How do you measure it now? Uh, Visual Website Optimizer is the tool that I use. I love it. It's been incredibly simple to implement, uh, and actually, uh, the the hard part has been uh, just letting things ride because it's so easy to make changes and so easy to start new tests that uh, that that I like to. I actually enjoy testing everything now. Strangely enough. Yeah, I mean, I say the three tips of productivity because when I tell people, you know, people ask me what I use. Obviously, I use Acuity, and one of the big things, I say there's like three tools that have made a huge difference in my life um, from just a productivity and saving time perspective, and Acuity is one of them because it saves me so much time. Like going back and forth on when scheduling a time or, oh, this doesn't work or this does work is just here, choose your time, and it's just so much easier. So that's why it like, immediately popped in my head of, Productivity, I can get so much more done. Where before it'd be back and forth seven emails, and now it's one email with here, choose your time. And we even use it for our personal life. So, like, my wife was complaining, like, I'm going back and forth with these people about dinner. Like, I don't even know what time I have available or schedule. I'm like, just use Acuity. And again, this isn't like a Acuity commercial or anything because I want to dig down on like how you created this that it's powerful for us. But I'm like, just send them the link and say, here, pick a Saturday night, you know, and then you don't have to go, you know, go anything more than that. But um, that's, so, that's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I think of like when I saw the start now for free, I'm wondering why did you choose not to, you know, you could have gone a, a bunch of variations, but obviously you tested that with visual website optimizer and that seemed to work the best. Yeah, yeah. My my market is definitely businesses, but I've heard yeah. that from a lot of people too that they like to have one calendar and actually just use that. So, I try to make it simple. And the one thing that I hated about other ones that I've used too is I, I actually enjoyed scheduling for you too. I, I don't really use Acuity that much, but it was it was surprisingly I I hate creating an account just to make an appointment. Um uh, the hair place that I go to has a, a terrible flash thing that requires you to register, go through 12 steps, and uh, I, I, I just want something using. <laughs> so what about, so you said early on you felt you filled in marketing, and then you feel like your pricing is too low. And that's one thing I actually did notice about the site, which I was going to bring up and ask is, you know, the premium for you is, well, how would you choose your pricing, I guess you could say? Uh, it was more of the dartboard model. Um, so I, I started out um, with DreamHost hosting, uh, and my plan for hosting was $9 a month. Um, so I made the base plan. Uh, first of all, I, I wanted to make it so that if you were making money with Acuity, you had to pay me. Um, my goal, too, was that if you were making more money, maybe you would pay a little bit more, but that's the part that I feel that I failed at. Um, so I set the base price so that as soon as I got one sign up, uh, Acuity was profitable. It was a, profitable by a dollar, but it was still profitable. And I've always tried to try to maintain that too. Um, so the the pricing was kind of arbitrary. And then um, it used to just be a single ten dollar plan. And then when I added more features to let larger businesses manage their staff and locations, mm -hmm. uh, I felt that that needed a larger price. Um, 
but I was using PayPal for payments at the time, so it was uh, it was kind of difficult to have adjustable pricing if people wanted to upgrade and downgrade their plan. Um, so I tried to keep it simple with two plans: one for a single person, one if you're if you have multiple staff. Um, and it's the multiple staff part that I wish that I had changed. I have I have some people with like. Uh, with 30 employees who email me every other day with questions and support and they take up a ton more time uh, and I'm probably losing money on those uh, and, I, and I don't have a way around that right now so you'll probably see some visual website optimizer testing uh, with different prices on the page to see how people react. Yeah so because I was thinking when I saw the premium I'm like wow that's really inexpensive you know just yeah. from the professional the premium you know, I'm like, well, yeah. it's, I mean, I won't say that now you're probably going to, you should change it actually. But, um, one question I had was how do you decide what things to include in the professional? Because you do have a free version right now as opposed to the professional, as opposed to the premium. Yeah. How do you decide what features people want that they would pay, pay for to jump from the free to the professional? Oh, that's an interesting question. I, I don't really think about, I think about what the feature costs me um, and what type of business that it promotes. Uh, I've actually started, um, if normally for, for any new feature, it will get included into all plans. So you've probably seen a ton more improvements lately since um, I've hired more people and have, have taken this on full time. Uh, and every single thing is included in all plans. Uh, the couple that weren't uh, were uh, synchronization with Google. Uh, that's something where I have to add extra code that's constantly checking Google for updates. Um, and it actually increased my server load. So I had to include that one in paid plans. Um, mm -hmm. Things like uh, customization and branding is something that it, it costs me more support to go back and forth with people, embedding into people's websites, it, it takes a little bit more support. So those are the ones that I that I uh, that I kind of incentivize people to upgrade for. But everything is that else premium is that in the premium. Like, can people um, use their own or can take off the acuity or what do you mean by that? The customization. Uh, so uh, the the free plan lets you offer appointment scheduling. You can change your availability. You right. can block off time. You can do pretty much everything to to just be able to schedule. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't let you it doesn't let you accept payment at the time of booking. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't let you change the colors, add HTML, or embed directly into your website. Mm -hmm. So you could have a little scheduling I see. widget. I right see. Website with, that's what with I do. That's what I do with the QD. I have the embedded into my website. Yeah, where there's just a tiny little powered by QD at the bottom. Right. Oh, people. So, so I see. Stuff. So people have questions about how they embed it into their site. That's the that's the questions yeah, you get. I see. Yeah, we we started this in uh, I think around 2006, 2007 was when I went public with it. And the initial adopters were very technical, and since right. then the, I no it's gone that. drastically less technical. And now I get people who, um, who who need a lot of help. I got gotcha. you, uh, and I'm happy to help, but it, it costs me more when I have to explain more technical things. Yes, yes. Okay, I didn't think of that because I just you know took the code and embedded it. But but yeah, I guess oh, most yeah, people easy. most people wouldn't know that. But one thing that I remember from the free to the professional like if if it wasn't included there's was no i needed to pay is because the like you were saying with the calendar syncing that's huge you know because i needed that and that's huge for me because then you have your calendar one place so yeah that was one thing that i looked for like yeah i just you need the paid account to do that so i was wondering yeah, if there was any that's what, any other features from you know that you include and you're like oh but it's more things of what you pay for and what's going to cost you time and money that you need to have in the in that um, professional premium yeah if if the only cost to me is developing it then it gets included everywhere if there's any long-term costs um, <clears throat> then it will have to go into a paid plan I see. Uh, and, and probably with with pricing adjustments that we're thinking about it's as you get more employees you have to to pay a little bit more um, just because it, it makes sense, it costs us more. Right, for sure. Um, and what's what's something that you get from, or questions that you included in it? Because again, you have limited time, everyone does. 
and you probably get a lot of inquiries on, oh, I want it, wish it did this, or I wish it included this. What was one thing that you kept hearing over and over that you finally had to listen to? That wasn't. Oh, in it, it's. It seems like there's different levels of requests. There's like um, uh, years ago, like 2008, 2009, when we just had the single user version. People kept asking, "I want to manage multiple staff." All right, that's all we got. Nothing more advanced than that. Then we got that, and then people wanted um, uh, other little features, be able to do custom forms. Added that, um, and it's as we as we solve these these things. Like recently, it was the Google Calendar syncing. Then it was um, uh, right now we get a lot of uh, a lot of questions about um, coupons and things like that, which. It's a little bit kludgy for, and I want to improve. Um, but it seems like every time we solve one of those feature requests, <laughs> some new thing becomes the most important thing that these people need. Mm -hmm. uh, and there, there are a lot of businesses that that we say no to. Uh, there are some. It's it's a, a ten dollar a month, nineteen dollar a month service. So we we don't really do much custom development. We we will actually do help people with JavaScript and, and HTML and things like that, which is why those are paid features. Um, but we're we're quick to say no to people if they're asking for for some things where it feels like it won't quite work for their business as it is. I mean, I'm I'm constantly improving, and every new feature request that we get, kind of kind of goes into a Trello document. Uh, if you use Trello, it's a great for keeping lists and I add a new color code every time somebody somebody wants it so it just keeps going up and up and up in my list and I can glance at it. Uh, and then eventually it makes it, if it makes sense, if it's back to one of those things of if it's something that can help everybody and actually be included uh, overall in, in all of the plans and makes sense. Yeah, so the marketing, you felt early on that you didn't spend enough attention to you feel the pricing even today is is too low that you need to raise that yes. um, because I always wonder how people figure out what the, pr the pricing is and I look at yours um, obviously as a customer I like the pricing but I definitely think oh yeah I, you know you could definitely charge more um, and now you start measuring things what was one of those accomplishments after you learned from a previous mistake that you did because of that because of you know, one of the mistakes you learned, what did you do then, um, or big milestone you accomplished because of, you learned from one of these previous mistakes? Yeah, so it definitely, my, my biggest mistake that I felt like was marketing. Um, it was that the onboarding process wasn't great, the marketing site wasn't great, so I, I spent some time trying to focus on it. So it was actually back in January. Um, uh, it was my it was my New Year's resolution to try to improve marketing a little bit, and every other year I did something fun like uh, like play more video games, drink more wine, and uh, damn it, I succeeded at all of those. So I was going to succeed at this one because my New Year's resolution was to uh, grow Acuity, and since the biggest thing that I saw lacking was marketing, um, I had always been adding new features to it, uh, and we've always been improving that part of it. Uh, but this time I I took a, a week off. Uh, uh, my wife went to a yoga training in New York City, and I sat in Stumptown Coffee uh, with the rest of the geeks from New York uh, and, and hacked away um, and improved the marketing site, uh, started doing the A-B testing. Um, uh, I think prior to this, the growth rate was uh, from around 2 to 5% on a given month. Uh, and since then, it's, it's improved a, a ton. Um, but... The entire marketing side was revamped. The onboarding process for users have been improved a lot. The visual appearance of things is is constantly being changed and tested. And and now I, I am I am doing metrics about everything. So um, every little page that somebody clicks, uh, how many support emails they have, where did they come from, um, uh, did they type into help. Uh, before they they left, did they actually contact me before leaving? I, I try to track everything because I failed at marketing, but I also failed at realizing how much I failed at marketing. So um, if you don't measure it, things. yeah, it's hard yeah. to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess that brings me to another question, which I'm thinking about now. You know, the conversion is increased and everything like that, but how do you get people to the site? Because you could have ten people coming to the site, and you're not, you know, that conversion could be you know, whatever it is, but 
it sounds like you're getting a large number of people to the site and it's growing a lot. How are you getting yeah. getting um, traffic? Yeah, um, so January made those changes. Around February, we've had a consistent growth rate of uh, 15 to 20% per month. Um, uh, the traffic generation was, I, I think that was actually one of the things I succeeded on early on was uh, SEO was pretty decent. I, I tried to pay attention to that. That was one of the, the Cody type of things that I could do. Uh, got decently high Google rankings. Uh, and then actually, uh, I was always on the first page of Google for um, all of the keywords that we targeted, online appointment scheduling, that type of thing. Uh, and since the changes to the marketing side of the site, adding more copy to it, improving what that copy said, uh, we're now in the top like three for all of the keywords. Um, so it's it's entirely Google, uh, and with with a little bit of Bing and Yahoo thrown in. Uh, we did have a big AdWords campaign, but um, kind of dropped that. It didn't it didn't make as much sense after I started measuring. Yeah, I mean, because people could optimize their site to the nth degree, but if they're not getting traffic, it doesn't really matter. What's one SEO tip that you tell someone this really worked? Because obviously you're getting, you know, you can play with the conversion because you're getting traffic to the site, but some people aren't getting any traffic yeah. at all. Yeah, so I, I think like uh, everybody mentions is we just started writing for the user um, and uh, just started writing more. Uh, and constantly changing it. <laughs> it seems like the A-B testing actually helps too. Um, we've, we've seen since we started A-B testing, uh, traffic from Google has increased a bit and, and we did jump up more in the, in the rankings too because of that. Uh, probably one of the, the biggest improvements was um, we did a, a long-term A-B test of the meta description. Um, and that had a few of the keywords in it, and for most of the keywords we targeted, the excerpt that Google Google took was our meta description. Um, so did two versions of that, uh, and saw click-throughs on Google increase an incredible amount. Uh, I think that they pretty much doubled thanks to that. Yeah. So you you change your meta description. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So so actually. Uh, kind of improving the copy on our site and improving what users see when they go to the Google search engine result page, the, the titles, the description excerpt that they get and everything like that. Yeah. So Gavin, what is one of the best pieces of advice that you'd want to make sure another business owner knows now that you've been through <laughs> some of these trials and tribulations? Yeah, we've we've grown a lot, and uh, like, like I said, it, it always seemed like everybody was saying focus on the product and make your users happy that way. But uh, you can't really make your users happy if they're not coming there. So if I were to do this all over again, I would probably focus around fifty percent on marketing promotion. Uh, looking at all my metrics, looking at AdWords, uh, and then the other 50%, maybe even less than that on the product. So besides SEO, what else has worked for the marketing now that you learned, okay, I need to focus my time and attention on the marketing aspect? Yeah, it's it's definitely been a lot of on-the-page marketing because <clears throat> before we were getting a, a, a fairer amount of traffic too besides SEO. Uh, I think that's one of the things we... Uh, I succeeded on early was making sure that the traffic went there. Um, it just definitely didn't stay there. So making things actually visually appealing, uh, <clears throat> focusing on the single element on the page where people go for their one second attention span mm -hmm. and making that worthwhile. Was there anything with the actual, you know, because one of the inherent viral things about what you have is when someone's scheduling with your software and someone's sending it to another person to schedule it, they're constantly seeing, oh, powered by Acuity on there. Was there any conversation, you know, with, with someone else who doesn't have a product like that, was there a conversation about including Powered by Acuity or not or taking it off if someone paid or how did you decide on that? Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Um, so the, the two things that we did were, um, one was um, for free users, we wouldn't let them embed into their site and they had to go point out their, give everybody the kind of the link to their scheduling page, um, which has 
a vanity URL of something.acuityscheduling.com so people know that they're going to Acuity uh, gotcha. and and limited amount of, of changes that they can have on there. And then also that powered by Acuity scheduling is is small on there, but I don't know. I actually I didn't really think about that as marketing, but kind of a service to people. Uh, I like it when I go to a lot of websites and I see something cool that they do. I'll want to know how they're doing that. Like mm -hmm. when they're providing support, I want to see what they did. I'll, I'll view Source a lot just to see like right. what are they using for their customer analytics on this website. So, um, and that that can be removed with a little bit of CSS that I've done for plenty of people when they ask, but. Um, no, I don't think it's intrusive or anything like that. I've seen ones that there there was – when I was doing the research early on, I saw one that was so intrusive that I wouldn't even think of using it. Maybe for me, I don't mind – same thing. Like people are wondering what it is and with Acute, I think it's subtle and it's there so people know that it, it's, it is what it is. But there's ones out there that I've seen um, – not going to mention names, but like that was so big that it almost overtook people clicking this to schedule. So I was like, yeah, that I can't have yeah. that. Yeah. And I, yeah. I've seen that with some of my competitors. I don't look at competitors too much, but some of them are, are kind of ugly when it comes to that. My, my goal with putting that on there was that if you were interested in what it was, you would be able to find that powered by, but if you weren't interested in what was going on, um, you would probably not even notice it. Yeah. Um, so what about, not from you, but tell me about a mentor. What's a good piece of advice you've gotten from a mentor that was valuable to you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, right out of college, I, I went and I worked for a startup. Um, and the startup was a, a government services company called Barico Technologies. Uh, and the CEO was a fantastic guy. He was pretty young. Um, he was a former uh, uh, officer in the army. Um, and the piece of advice that he gave me was kind of look at everybody like they're they're actually people, um, and think about what motivates them. And they're they're not acting for arbitrary reasons. They're acting out of a certain motivation, and that's kind of stuck with me too. Like we were talking about support. Um, I always like support to be kind of personable too and when people send me an angry email um, uh, I, I try not to get too annoyed because I realize that all they're trying to do is is get their business up and running for that day and they might be under a whole ton of stress from somebody else but realize what's motivating them at that time is just getting things working. It's not that they want to leave or anything else, it's that they just want what they have working at that moment. Um, so that that has has stuck with me, uh, and especially when I was working in the government for a while, uh, there's an insane amount of bureaucracy. So the the best way to get around the bureaucracy is to understand that that people are personally motivated with everything that they do. So was there one thing, one story that you remember from because you knew this, you were able to talk to someone a different way and get them motivated? <laughs> Uh, it, it's kind of been one of those things that's been un, unconscious to me now, or subconscious to me now that just kind of uh, sticks in there. Um, and I, I try not to get angry with people at any time. Uh, and my wife finds that I'm, um, I'm very calm when it comes to crazy situations too because all the time I realize that now they're, they're probably not mad at me. They're not mad at anything right. else. They're, they're just motivated by, by something else. Um, so what was a crazy customer request or angry email that you got? Because we get those and it's hard to also not take them personally. And it seems like you're good at <laughs> not taking them personally. What was one that most of us would have probably gotten uh, angry about or taken personally? Oh my gosh. It's, it's not, it, for me, it's never just one email. It's always that there's some people who, it, this kind of goes back again to the pricing thing where, um, there are, are a few people who constantly email in every other day. It seems like there's something that they need help with. Uh, and it's just because they, they run a large business. They have 30 employees working for them. And when something little doesn't work right, uh, they have 30 people yelling at them asking what their schedule is for that day. So um, it's those types of people that I realize I, I'm probably losing – I am losing money on uh, – 
because for their $19 a month account, uh, I'm spending probably 50% of the support request time on those couple of people, right. uh, and it's the it's the constant constant emails, uh, and they're uh, the the ones that are things like my son could create something like this, and and some people are actually just really insulting in support emails, and I don't understand it. <laughs> So some of those I have to, I read it and I just like, I push my phone away. I realize I'm not going to respond to this one now. I'm just going to let this one chill for a little bit. Um, go back to it for a little while, actually try to see. But uh, those ones kind of kind of make me really annoyed. And, and they're the ones that motivate me to increase pricing. Um, yeah. I but feel only like in a way so that the people who are more pressured, have more people making more money are the ones who pay a little bit more. I feel like when we say things through the internet, it's almost like, not that there's not another person on the line, but it's almost somewhat anonymous. So, you know, you'd never say that to someone to their face, but it's through an email and you don't like see someone's face there. It don't, oh. you know what I mean? It feels like yeah, they can just lash out or something like that. It's incredible. It's funny too how emotions don't really last because conversations over email might go over <clears throat> in exchanges over a couple hours instead of a heated one in a couple of minutes. Um, so actually, we've been really strict about never doing phone support, and part of the reason too um, is to give people a little bit time to to simmer with everything. And um, honestly, when they're in one of those moods where they're convinced that their 14 year old son could do a better job, <clears throat> just think about that for a couple of hours. And um, if you really feel that way after I get back to you with a rational reason about why it's not working, then. Have your son do it, for God's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> I have one last question for you, Gavin. I appreciate your, your time and kind of opening up with some of the challenges and uh, mistakes so we can learn from them. Um, but before I ask the question, um, which I'm excited to ask because um, a little bit personal, but, but not so much. Um, what's, what can you tell us about what's exciting about Acuity? Tell us a little bit more about what's going on now. Yeah, so I, I think the things that's most exciting to me is since January, we've had an insane amount of growth. Um, it's become unmaintainable. Since that time of, of sleeping on, doing working 24 hours, responding to four emails, sleeping on a floor of a town home with nothing in there, um, I've finally taken this full time. I, I, I've hired more people to help out. Um, we're growing, we're profitable. The thing that I'm proud about is that it's fully bootstrapped. It's been profitable since the first customer, like I mentioned. Um, and now we're just working on adding a whole ton of new features, bringing in new users. The more users we're able to get, the more we're able to put into actually growing the product. And I think we've we've just added an incredible amount. And um, uh, uh, even though I've hired, I'm trying to keep the company small and keep it agile um, so that uh, I'm able to quickly respond when somebody has a request and actually give really good, deep technical support to people whenever they ask. Yeah. Um, and, and now I'm just happy that I'm able to do that full time. So Gavin, tell people where can they find, they want to check out Acuity, what's the best domain or, or site for them to go to? Uh, AcuityScheduling.com. Uh, maybe not the easiest one to spell, but it's A C U I T Y, uh, and then Scheduling.com. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you just Google for Acuity Scheduling, or um, I think if you Google for online appointment scheduling software, um, we should be in the top couple of links. Yeah. Uh, so maybe maybe Google is the easiest way. Uh, Give it a try, and of course, you can always email me. Uh, we have two people on support. Uh, uh, go just go to the help page if you have any questions. If you want to try out a paid account, we'll be happy to upgrade you for a while. So, so if people want to thank you for the info sharing, and uh, where can they? What's the best place to email you at? Uh, the the easiest one is support at acuityscheduling.com. Uh, that will go directly to me, and I probably check that more than my normal email. <laughs> that gets into my last question. Uh, my last question is, immediately when you told me, oh, I'm at a bar and I'm responding to emails, tell me about your wife in this role. Like, what does she think about you? You're sitting at dinner or, you know, we often, often are obsessed with our business. We want to be the best at support. What does your wife say when you're responding to that <laughs> in the bar? 
Oh man, so I I met my wife in college and she used to get so annoyed when I would work on this little side project after classes. Um, and then she started to, re she used to get so mad at me uh, and then she used to get really annoyed as we were uh, trying to watch TV or something together and I would be sitting on my laptop answering emails and, and now I'm at a bar responding to things. but. Uh, she's been incredibly supportive, and and I think that she understands now, and especially now, um, now that I'm able to focus on acuity, uh, mm -hmm. she was the one who kind of pushed me to to quit my my other job uh, and take this on full time. Um, so I I definitely I definitely would probably have have killed myself with overwork by now if it wasn't for her. She balances you a little bit. Yes, she does. So what was she the last it. straw? What was the last straw that made you I need to just go full time with this? Oh, it was uh it was working too much. Um it, it was it was when I when I stayed at my town home, I worked for literally 24 hours. Um <clears throat> Just responded to emails while I was all bleary eyed. I had drinking four Red Bulls before, and I was still able to to get four hours of sleep immediately after that and conked out. Uh, and that that goes on, that that happens regularly. And it's a couple of those times when I would when I would wake up at at six a.m. in the morning, answer emails real quick. I would drive to work, answer emails from my phone from work. I would go into work all day without any phone, without any internet connection, come out and see uh, 40 emails of people that have problems and try to answer it on my phone. And then I would work until 10 p.m. at night again. And, um, and, and it, it wasn't because I wasn't it wasn't profitable enough, and I realized that oh wow, I, I, actually I can do this full time. Um, it was a career choice, and it's the career choice between doing something incredibly cool, uh, working in the intelligence community, um, even though it is with the government, and and now focusing on creating something and, and building something and and being entrepreneurial. Yeah, well. So, Gavin, I want to be the first person to thank you. This has been very valuable. Thank you so much. And I want to thank your wife, too, for uh, understanding all those nights so that you could uh, have a, a great system that, that we use here. So thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Jeremy.